welcome to Wood Turning with Dick. Wood Turning with Dick. Actually, no. It's an exciting day. I've had a package arrive all the way from North Carolina in America. Oh, it's a t-shirt. It's a t-shirt from Brailsford Woodworks. Brailsford Woodworks. That's who I'm making this video for, essentially. Once you've watched this video, go and check out his stuff. Brilliant. He's got this chaos vase look, made up of lots of different pieces of wood. He's done some fabulous little, little turning, some massive river tables with the logo in the resin, which is epic. But there's one particular video I really want you to watch, and it's the video of him and his workshop. Oh my God. My workshop, tiny. His workshop, humongous. I am so jealous. So go and check it out after this. I'll remind you at the end. Um, he sent me this white t-shirt. I'm gonna use a bit of bog oak because he's very keen on the bog oak pieces that I do. We'll see what color the t-shirt ends up. If you're a wood turner, give this a go next weekend. It's a brilliant little piece. You want something with a natural edge down both sides, about two inches thick. Can be thicker, can be thinner, but two inches gives it a nice foot at the bottom to rest on. Go and find yourself a bit of wood next weekend. This is your, this is your project. Let me show you the piece I'm gonna use. Ta-da! Let me try and explain what I'm gonna do on the table. Just over 10% moisture, perfect for bog oak. I've selected this piece of bog oak because we've got a reasonably flat surface to begin with. It's quite warped as you travel this way, but I only want a section off the back. I'm gonna take that down and then I'm gonna turn a bowl in the face of the flat surface, leaving that natural edge at the sides, leaving a little bit of room on the base, same at the top. I'll be able to show you better when I, once I've taken that, that down across there, but do hang around because the interesting bit comes a little bit later on after it's turned. Now you can do this with any natural edge piece, and I hope to hear that you're going to be making one exactly like this. I'll cut it about there. That might be an issue. Look at the colors. <laughs> Look at that lovely brown in there. I'm gonna go ahead anyway. I might need to fix that crack later on. We'll see. Oh, look at that. It's got some lovely brown tones through that bog oak. That's precious. It does come up beautifully in the finished piece. So that crack, you poke something down. Let's see how far it goes. <laughs> At least halfway. That is going to be an issue for what I want to do. Let's get this plane down to nice and even, and then we'll have another look at this crack. I chopped up the rest of it for another one of these exactly the same, which I'm not going to film them both. That's what's left over. Took a nice wedge out where that crack ran all the way down through. That's essentially that wedge there. Oh, the colours though, they're lovely. Those light browns and dark browns through to the black. Whew. Might do something with that at some stage. Not today. And this was what was left of the other section. Reasonably thick this side. Quite thin this side once you've got rid of that crack. I think with this one, I'm going to run it through the planer at the same time as this one, or just after, because it's quite a bit thinner. Man, bog oak is so beautiful with its cross grain and its various colors. If you ever get a chance to work some, do, but watch out for the cracks. Just, wow. Brailsford Woodworks, this is some of the nicest bog oak that I've seen. Granted, it's got a lot of cracks and splits through it. This is the start of another crack. I'm going to leave that as is, maybe stabilise it with some super glue. Just see the, the brown is starting to come through the middle there. This is going to be the side I'm going to be, is going to be visible and showing. You will see the back as well, but as the back of the piece, people do tend to turn things around and they'll see that. But yeah, uh, I'll leave that there. Again, maybe just stabilise some of the looser bits with some super glue and rub that back. But that's the secondary piece, which I wasn't going to be showing you me making at all but i guess it's being now included in the video this is the primary piece a lot thicker next thing is run this through the table saw just get this nice and squared up top and bottom that's all squared off as you saw from the table saw next job two jobs next job find dead centers Right, that's dead centre between there and there. And then just inside the bark, I'll go that way a bit. 
There's about the center of both. Have my bowl about there, about there. All right, I think I can mark that up safely. Measure my bowl. I'll do this again when I finish the bowl. And at this stage, I'm just gonna put a rough pencil mark down there. Bear in mind that that's not going necessarily gonna be the exact pencil mark I will use at the end. They will be my cut lines. I think I'll do that on the mitosaur. saw. Not yet. <laughs> Turn the bowl first. But before I do that, I'm just going to tidy up this bark because it's ridiculously loose on the bog oak. It just falls apart in your fingers. So as I normally do, I'll speed it up for you. I'm just going to take the wire brush on my grinder and just tidy up this outside edge carefully. Hey Brailsford, your t-shirt's not doing too well. <laughs> I'm just gonna drill down my guide and form a screw chuck. Gonna leave me plenty of room at the bottom, but I am gonna put a bit of sacrificial wood on the back for a chuck grip. But let's just quickly drill that down. And the other one. Now, I am seriously concerned about this crack. So the plan to cut this middle section out, or cut down here, cut down here. When I do that, what do you reckon the chances are that this, this these two pieces are gonna separate? Yeah. I've checked the angle of this crack and it is down, deeper down here, higher up here. I think I'm gonna put a couple of dowels in the corner. I'm gonna turn down a piece of bog oak That'll do. You'll be able to see it through the crack there, but this is the bottom. I reckon one up here, one up here. That'll just help hold it all together if I glue it in well. So. Awesome. Jackpot. Now I've got some very holy wood. <laughs> holy bog oak. Ta-da! Show you the sand of ceiling of the inside of the bowl. Not that the inside of the bowl is going to be visible later on because it's going to be gilded. You'll see. Nice sharp bowl gouge. to get a nice bowl that graduates up as you come up with a nice smooth corner to a crisp edge that's semi-important for when you cut it up 
it's a little bit more challenging to show you on, on something so thin. I'll show you on the next one as well. But that will do, I think. Nice graduating curve up. Not too deep in this corner. So it's not too sudden a change. I do hate seeing that square in the bottom of a bowl. Uh, certainly don't want it for this piece. So nice graduating curve up. That is one ugly crack. Ah, yuck. <sighs> well, what is it they say? We are where we are. Nice bowl shape, nice gradual curve, nice tall finish, no major tears, apart from the damn big crack. Oh well, half expecting it anyway. Let's get it sanded and uh, I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. There are some monster cracks on this thing. Now, as it is, it's all nice and stable with that dowel I put in earlier. I'm gonna measure up exactly where I'm gonna cut it and then we'll talk about putting more dowels in because it's not gonna to hold together without more dowels. But that is pretty, isn't it? Golden browns in that. So looking at these cracks, we need to put another dowel through here, just that side of the pencil line. Another one through here, just this side of the pencil line. One through here, that'd be okay. That should, mm, if we look at the other side, this is fine. I think a dowel through the middle here, a dowel through here, so that's five. Five dowels to do, just to make sure it all, all holds together once I cut it up into three pieces. That should do for one lot. And that, believe it or not, nice and solid through there and through there. That'll do for a couple more, which should be enough. So let's get that turned. There's no particular formula for cutting this up. This bowl has got a 16.5 centimeter diameter. Measured across the bowl, marked up both sides where the bowl comes down, 16.5 centimeters. Measured in 4.5 centimeters both sides, giving me 7.5 centimeters, then equates to a similar width to each side. The 4.5, where the line comes down, is the, the main bit of the curve of the edge of the bowl. And it also gives more a foot for the middle section to stand up on, because that's got a nice foot, that's got a nice foot, nice foot if it's a bit wider in the middle. Up to you. You can do exact thirds and see how it comes out. It might look perfect. Time to cut them. Okay, here goes. Dowel's holding steady. <laughs> How's that for a crack? Now, had I not put that dowel in there, that would have been flopping around like nobody's business. One. Nice thin base. <laughs> you will be judged by how good yours is as to how thin you've got that base. 
If it's this fat, <laughs> your bowl could be deeper. All right, I'll show you those stood up in a minute. Obviously, it's not rocket science, but let's get the other one cut as well. Let's get this moved out of the way. And there we have a triptych. Lots of hand finishing to do, but they can be displayed in all sorts of manners. Be a lot smoother when there's less sawdust on the on the surface. But I like them. So, gonna hand finish all of these, all the cuts, nice and smooth. Very little finishing on the bottom, if any, because that's been cut on the table lovely and sharp and will sit on a flat surface lovely and firm. If I start sanding it, there's a chance I round edges off and, and then things won't line up properly. Not that you're going to display them all squished together like that, because often you just you can display them just where the cut mark is. Right, let me get that sanded. Then I stick around because I want to show you them being gilded and then when they're finished being gilded on the middle there. I think you'll like them. I know, like me, you're all dying to see what this is going to look like with a bit of sand and sealer on. Have a look at my dowels. Fitted rather well. As I say, they're at the back of the piece, but they do serve a very useful purpose to hold the thing together. And that's the bottom. So I'm just going to quickly go over that. Uh, top. Now that's quite pretty. Again, it's the back, but it's rather lovely. You can see one of my dowels there. So I've sanded these to 320 grit. I'll denib with 400. Then I'll wax them. Then I'll give them to Lenore to gild the insides. There's my big dowel. See it really clearly in there. Very pleased with the way they turned out. I do take a lot of care over the finish of my pieces. I don't want I don't want any sanding lines whatsoever. So I always run the sandpaper on pieces like this with the grain. And bog oak, it's pretty amazing stuff to work with actually. Nothing spectacular about the other ones, so I won't bother showing you me sand sealering that. I'll get those done, get those denibbed, get them waxed, and then off to Lenore. I have washed the t-shirt because it was rather mean and I really didn't want to go out in public with it that dirty. So I washed it, especially for you, Mr. Brailsford. Now, I'm over here at the Gilda, Lenore. She has finished the pieces. There's a few little bits of tidying up to do, a little bit of speck of gold here and there you might notice. You saw the ones being gilded just now. There's the copper one, champagne gold. And the last one in gold. Now the deeper one, done in just gold. Because it really does bounce the light, light nicely. And as I said before, the nice thing about these, you can position them how you want to. There we go, project for the weekend. Don't forget to sign up to Brailsford Woodworks. Go and check out his YouTube channel now and let me know what you thought.